in college sports and deciding to play football this fall. Defying the risks of the coronavirus pandemic to salvage a season for fans and show up the financial health of its schools. So the Pac-12, which said last month that its teams will not compete until at least 2021, said Thursday that it would attempt to play as soon as November the 6th, which is a month from now. The decision came eight days after the Big Ten, which had also elected not to compete this semester, reversed its approach and announced that games would begin in October. Independent medical experts and even some college sports officials have questioned in public and in private the property of playing during a pandemic that is ravaging the country at large and in particular campuses. But the leading conferences which have imposed testing mandates and other tactics to try to prevent the virus from spreading within their locker rooms have increasingly insisted that they can manage the virus from spreading. The pandemic's risk and complications. So Larry Scott, the Pac-12 commissioner, said Thursday that the league's recent contract for daily testing of athletes was a game changer in enabling us to move forward with confidence that we can create a safe, a safe environment for our student athletes while giving them the opportunity to pursue their dreams. And with the league's medical advisory plan, said in a report released Thursday that they had agreed it was possible to play in part because of improvements in pandemic conditions. So under the pac 12 plan, the league's teams, which include California, Oregon, Stanford, Southern California, and Washington State will play seven game conference schedules. The league championship game is expected to be played on December 18th two days before the college football playoff selection committee is scheduled to release its final rankings. Beyond the Big Ten and the Pac-12, the other so-called Power Five conferences, the Atlantic Coast, the Big 12, and the Southeastern have already begun play or intend to this weekend. In addition to announcing a projected November 6th start for football games with fans barred from venues that include Oxygen Stadium and the Rose Bowl, the Pac-12 said it plan to begin its men's and women's basketball seasons on November 25th, so about three days before Thanksgiving, more than a month earlier than its initial timeline had permitted. So Thursday's move by the Pac-12 resorted a kind of erupted unity to the Power Five as they spent more than a month publicly fractured around football, and it left more than 30 states poised to hold college football games this autumn. So the decisions by the leagues, some publicly unflinching, others openly deliberating from one month to the next, carry enormous, enormous implications for college athletes. By playing football, even without every stadium packed with fans, schools across the country will collectively earn hundreds of millions of dollars from broadcast rights and sponsorships that will prop up budgets that have been threatened with severe cuts. But they are also imperiling what remains of their public standing with the way that they will be able to protect the students who play for them. Before some of their teams have played a single down this season, leagues have been accused of prioritizing money and power over health and safety protocols. The Big Ten's reversal last week was most often linked to medical advancements, but it came with a conference facing political pressure, litigating and outrage so widespread that top coaches were openly questioning the league. And so the Pac-12 confronted far less outrage after its announcement on August 11th, the same day the Big Ten postponed its season that it would not play this fall. At the time, the league detailed its medical advisors think of warning that, uh, you know, community prevalence remains very high in much of the Pac-12 footprint and declined that there needed to be greater testing capacities. It stifted any internal dissent, but the league's caution was helped along by public officials who imposed restrictions on gatherings, effectively forcing cancellations of practices. So, you know, last week, though, the atmosphere around the conference began to shift rapidly in the wake of Big Ten's decision. Players lobbied Governor Gavin Newsom of California to ease restrictions. He and government, Governor Katie Brown of Oregon agreed that the state governments would not impede the Pac-12. But the local authorities also widely agreed to pave the way for athletes. Still, the hours before the meeting of Pac-12 leaders showed how turbulent the Pac-2 and through a season might be, officials in Boulder County 
Colorado, home of the Colorado Buffaloes, restrict the gatherings of people who are between the ages of 18 and 22, and specifically said that people in that age range could not participate in practices or enter college at sports teams. But the league was facing broader pressure to try for football, particularly since it was a long power five conference, posed not to play this autumn. For instance, President Trump, who had been badgering the Big Ten, but according to conference officials, did nothing substan substantial to aid that league's plans, turned his public attention to the Pac-12 last week after the Big Ten had relented. But then the league was already considering its options. And by the end of the week, it was beginning to telegraph the unanimous decision its chances and resonance made on Thursday. But amid the celebratory mood among conference officials and players, Shell acknowledged that the situation was still changing. Wow, this is so, so powerful because the Big Ten, the Big Ten that might not play until December the 18th, women's and men's college hoops won't get started until November 28th. Here's my thing. Here's what I don't get about this, okay? And follow me, sports fans, if you agree with me. September, fall starts September. September, October, November, December. You mean to tell me you're going to start the basketball college season in November? When? Honest to God, the sports complex, well, okay, in all fairness, we have the NCAA from January, February, March, and then, you know, March Madness starts in March. So, hear me up. What if March Madness doesn't start and the virus deepens up, which God forbid it does? You're not thinking. You're not thinking, uh, um, presidents. You're not thinking. You're 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 getting you did women's and men's basketball started November 25th. That's not a good. That's not a good. That's not a good start for anybody to start playing ball. Why? Because things are good. Things are good on ladies. You want to be with your family. Of course, you know, of course, it's good with them. But that's not smart. That's not a smart thing. But I am not a president because if I was a president of NCAA, I would do things my way, which would be totally, totally obscure about what these presidents are doing. But these presidents are thinking, like, okay, can we start the season in November? Can we start the season in October? No. If you want to start a season in the fall, you got to start it in September. That makes sense. If you start in the fall, yes, we know November is still the fall. December, you're getting into the winter months of the year, man. And you're thinking about this. The leaves are changing. The leaves are falling off the, tree, off the trees. In September, you're getting fall-like weather. In December, you're getting winter-like weather. Wintry-like weather. You're getting snow. You're getting ice. You're getting rain. You're getting freezing rain. I don't get it, but... I'll just have to accept it, accept for what it is, because, like I said, I'm the, if, if I was the president of Pac-12, well, I would do things my way, and I would do things better. So, you know, um, so I'm going to take a quick break, but I'll come back uh, more on the uh, college sports report here on E-Radio WMCR. I'll be back in just a jet.
Welcome, welcome back to the College Sports Report. As always, moving on here. So, New York this past week, the university at Buffalo says 25 athletes, including 19 football players, have tested positive for the coronavirus. Athletic Director Mark Anunt says five members of the women's volleyball team and one woman soccer player also tested positive. All that says the athletes have been placed in isolation and are doing very well. In other virus-related developments, West Virginia University will allow the general public to attend football games at a reduced capacity next month. West Virginia University Athletic Director Shane Lyons said attendance will be limited to about 15,000 fans to 25% capacity starting with the October 17th home game against Kansas. And Purdue University has suspended 14 students, 13 of them athletes for violating the Protect Purdue pledge by attending a party Saturday in a residence hall. The students must vacate the dormitory by Wednesday, though they can file an appeal. The South has cut seven sports effective at the end of the academic year in a move affecting approximately 130 athletes. Yeah, this was pretty uh, pretty good story for me because um, you know, Buffalo, 25 athletes, 19 football players that tested positive for virus. Listen, this is a dangerous thing, you guys. Continue to wear your masks, athletes. I'm telling you. I'm t- hey, you might not like wearing your masks, but hey, it's what you gotta do, man. It's what you gotta do. If you want to get, if you want to get sick, man, do your job with your mask, okay? Because you're getting other people sick in your household, in the dormitories, in the colleges. I don't care whether you share a dormitory with the, with with a friend. You're getting them sick. Wearing your mask saves a life. It can save your life. It can save a lot of people's lives if you just wear a mask. Come on, athletes. You weren't born yesterday. Come on. Uh, so moving on here. So the University of Maryland intends to play football this year after all. The Big Ten Athletic Conference announced Tuesday that it plans to begin the season in late October, reversing course after deciding last month to cancel all competitions for the year because of the coronavirus pandemic. The season is set to start the weekend of October 23rd and 24th, which is in two weeks. With the conference championship on December the 19th, Big Ten says it would adapt stringent medical protocol for the season. This includes daily testing for all student athletes, coaches, trainers, and anyone else on the field for practices and games. Athletes who test positive for the virus cannot return to competition until at least 21 days after their diagnosis. COVID positive athletes must also undergo cardiac testing and receive a clearance before returning to play. So the conference will monitor virus positivity rates and has set specific benchmarks that could trigger a suspension of practice or competition. Whether or not to resume college athletics has been one of many fraught debates during the coronavirus pandemic. On August 5th, the Big Ten announced it would limit its fall season to only conference play. A week later, it made the call to postpone 